Welcome to our service from the Turton Moreland team this Sunday. We begin with words from the psalm as we thank God for his goodness. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all places on earth. For the Lord has made us, he has made us, and we are his children. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let us lift our spirits in praise and our hearts in thanksgiving. As for pretty much all businesses who try and keep a building open and help people gather, our churches have found the last six months very difficult and we know that the following months are going to be difficult. And we are beginning to think, what is it that we can do to help the community celebrate events like Harvest? How can we be part of the community remembering at Remembrance Tide? And we have to think too about what we can do at Christmas. And we hope that our online provision at least provides some support and some help and some connection for our communities so that we can be together, even if only online, for these events. Times when we want to celebrate and times when we are called to remember. And our first hymn is Through All the Changing Scenes of Life with images from the Bradshaw Brook.
God calls us to live by his ways and to follow his paths, but we have not always done so. Our prayer of confession. Almighty God, you have made us and given us so much. You are a God of grace, mercy and peace, but we have not always been gracious to others. We have not shown mercy to those most in need. We have not sought peace nor lamented violence. As we call ourselves Christians, so may we model the grace and mercy of Christ in our love of our neighbours and for the well-being of all our world and its peoples. Forgive us, we pray, when our actions or inaction has not honoured your name. May Almighty God forgive us and restore us to his peace. Amen. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around and he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the labourers and give them their pay beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am not doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give you this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. One of the things that children discover very early on is the idea of fairness, or possibly what they discover most quickly is the idea of unfairness. Or again, to be a bit more precise, what they discover is what it feels like when someone is unfair to them. Children don't always speak up immediately if they think somebody has been unfair to others or that they have got the advantage, but they are very quick to speak when they feel they have been treated unfairly. And that goes into our adult lives where we are very quick, most of us, to speak or to say something or to feel aggrieved if we think we have been treated unfairly, if, particularly if we think others have got more than they deserve or we have got less in comparison to them. It seems to be a deep-seated human feeling. Within the seven deadly sins that were part of the medieval way of looking at the world, there was greed, greed that always wanted more, or avarice as it was known. And there was envy, which was jealousy about what other people had got. And the question that sets this parable going, are you envious because I am generous, says the landowner. When we see God wanting to bless others, when we see God offering others freely from his grace, are we envious? Sometimes we think we've worked so hard in church. We have done so much. We haven't had the thanks that we deserved. And in life, we see other people who we think are getting more than us. Even if they're not, we still think they are and we react. It's part, I'm afraid, of our culture when it comes to refugees and asylum seekers in this country. 
we think they're getting far more than they deserve. What about everybody else? It's not the nicest of human traits, envy, and it eats us up. And in this parable told in the context of day labourers in the ancient world, the landowner who has taken on more and more people, not because he's got an economic head on his shoulders, he hasn't. He is caring for those that haven't got work. He's taking as many as he can find who need a day's wage to survive. It's not good economics for his vineyard. It's generosity to those in need. And what we find is the generosity of God and the response of others which says, are you envious because I am generous? Last week we looked at the mercy of God, the wonderful, rich mercy of God to us. And we were challenged to say, do we show mercy to others? This week, the theme is generosity. Do we understand how generous God is to us? And can we accept that generosity when he gives it to others? Or are we envious? Envy is not a good characteristic. It hurts others and it hurts us. It eats away. May we discover how much God has given us, how much God loves us. And may we be set free not to envy when we see God giving to others as well. And our prayers for others are led by Andy. On this 15th Sunday after Trinity, let us pray. Hear us, dear Lord, as we pray for the Church around the world. We pray for our bishops and archdeacons and all our clergy in the Turton Moorland team. Dear Lord, we thank you for the strength and fellowship we continue to provide each other and those around us. We pray for resilience, patience and awareness as we cope with the restrictions in our lives. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, you have given us a world of beauty, love and opportunity, but numerous heartbreaking events and conflicts make us lose sight of this. Loving Father, we pray for those who have died in the hundreds of thousands of people displaced, many losing everything in the wildfires in Western America. Help us to see the impact our actions have on our world. Bless and guide Elizabeth our Queen Give wisdom to all in authority. Direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, hear us as we pray for all in our local community. We pray for those people who have yet to find and accept you into their lives. May the veil be lifted from their eyes and your light shine out in their darkness. Loving Father, we pray for those less fortunate than ourselves, for the agencies, both public and volunteer services in our community, providing help and comfort at this difficult time. Dear Lord our King, give us guidance and help us all see how we can make that difference. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us, dear Lord, as we pray for the sick, the suffering and those in need. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We also pray for the departed and for those who mourn. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your kingdom. Lord, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all the human family to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We are called to reflect God's glory. Our final hymn, let all the world in every corner sing. 
and the images are reflections from the streams and from the reservoirs in our area. through all the changing scenes of life. These services over the last six months have seen us move from, from spring through summer now into early autumn. And the news is not particularly good for a speedy resolution of the problems. So we expect that these services will continue. In fact, we hope they can continue as a useful resource for people who cannot get to church. But we need to know, please, what is it of value to you? What is it that you most value? What can we do different? What can we include? What would you like? Please do comment. If you're on Facebook, you can use the comments underneath or you can email us and say, this is what we really benefit from. This is what we like. This is what we'd like different. Our churches are open and in the coming weeks we have our annual meetings, a chance for us to come together and at least to begin to plan for the coming months. As churches, we want to be there for others. Some of us are using three very simple images that as church, we look within. We look within ourselves to look honestly at who we are. We face up, which is one of the ways to say we look to God. We look to God, we worship God, we draw our strength from God and we face outwards. We face outwards wanting to serve our communities, to help and to support. And this is a dynamic trio. As we face out, we need to also be looking within ourselves and facing up to God. As we face up to God, so we should also face out to the community. Love God and love your neighbour are the great commands. And this is what we want to be doing as local churches. We want to be helping people look within, to face up and discover God and to face outwards and to meet the needs and the difficulties that people face. So please support us in whatever way you can. Please pray for us as we pray for you. If you can give financially, please do. Please continue to support the charities that our churches support, particularly the Children's Society, as we come towards Christ Ingle. Urban outreach with all the needs that there are in Bolton for the hungry and the poor. Christian aid with its concern for the wider world. If there's anything you feel you can do to help, please let us know. And together let us ask for God's blessing. We ask for God to bless us, to bless our homes, our families and our loved ones. But we also, as we face outwards, ask God to bless our communities, our local area, our nation and our world. May we know God's blessing. We May we know his incredible generosity and grace. May we have his gift of peace as we seek to live for others. May God guide us, guard us, and give us peace today 
and in the coming week. Amen.